guys, Pat here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, the more junk you get, the more stuff you gotta maintain. <laughs> so, the other day, I was trying to turn on my air compressor. Um, it's a battery start on the box truck. And I needed that compressor so I can speed up the disassembly of this old um, greenhouse that I had come across. I couldn't get the air compressor to run. So, I uh, come to troubleshoot this switch right here was bad. Well, that's not an external switch. Or that's not an outside switch. Or, uh, something that's supposed to be, not supposed to be outside in the weather. But the old switch was on there, was an old coal switch, and it lasted for, well, 21 years. So I went ahead and replaced the switch and found out that these studs were too short to accommodate one last connector to go on there. So I cleaned all these connectors up put them together and my compressor and generator both work fine but now I need to extend this post I also made a little dormer of sorts or a cover to go over top of that switch so when the rain runs back behind the cab of the truck it's not going to drip into the switch so I did temporary this it was raining the other day I went ahead and just put a little piece of plastic on here with some Gorilla Tape and that seemed to do the trick for, for a while but now that's not raining I can put this I can put this little cover on here um, I made this while it was raining <laughs> out a piece of some of the tin that we had left over from our roofing project that brings you guys up to date and now I need to remove the battery cover and See if I can extend that post out and also install that little that little cover. To remove the handle or the switch itself, I guy just needs a Phillips screwdriver for this particular one. I'll set that aside. Nipix pliers. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. They're a little different to uh, change. And some things, these little square jaws on this really come in handy for things like, like these larger nuts on switches like this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get some turpentine or acetone or something and clean this up. want to make sure that that's really clean because back behind that cover that I made I'm going to put some silicone okay well that's drying for a second okay I'm gonna put this on first so it's nice and tight against the the cab then I'll put this little washer they had on there. And then I'll put the little nameplate deal on there. And then I will put, probably don't need a lock washer on there, but, or, but I'll put it on anyway because they had it on. All right, that's, that came with it, so I'll put it back on. I have enough room for it, just barely. Now I'll put just a little bit, a little bead right along with that connection where that marries together. Okay, now I've got this little extender nut that goes, will go on to here, cover some of these. I have just enough slack on about four or five threads on 
that stud where I can put this on and then I have another nut that I can use to capture these other two connectors. So I'm going to get, go ahead and go get some antioxidant. And we'll cover this. We'll fill the threads up with it. Cover the nut with it. And I brought an extra nut just in case I needed to fill up some space on the shank here and then also the depth on this nut but I'm going to test it to see, make sure that it can go all the way in I believe it can now it looks like I got a little bit too much antioxidant in the in the threads of the nut so I have to clean a little bit of it out that's going to be close and I think by the time I stick both of those ends on there I think it'll come out just about perfect yeah I think that'll work let me tighten that up just a little bit make sure I'm not bottoming out no I just have a lot of antioxidant in there which is good I want to I want to make sure that I don't have any water but I want to limit the amount of water do what we can to keep the water out of it is what I'm trying to say well you guys are small enough to fit on top of the battery so I can set you right back there and you get a little better picture of what's going on a little bit better view now before I tighten this up, I want to tighten this extender nut. Alright guys, if you ever have a switch like that that's uh, out in the weather and you're a little concerned about it or if it stops working, uh, the other one that failed because I could see rust coming out from all around it, obviously because I, when, I, when I changed that switch out everything started working again. So anyhow, uh, there's ways of testing that, making sure you have continuity across both of those contacts on those big lugs back there. If you don't, well, your switch is bad. Anyhow, it's not a repairable item as far as I know. Uh, I thought maybe one of these days I would take that old switch apart and see what see what's on the inside. Just a bunch of contacts and a couple of spring-loaded switches is what it is. Hope that helps you guys out. Gives you guys an idea of what you might do if you have something like this. And thanks for stopping by. Take care and God bless you.